I'm Megan Mitchell. This is my co-host, John Morrison, and you, yeah, you, <laughs> are listening to the True North Race Podcast. Time to strap in, pull those belts, and get ready for an action-packed episode of the True North Racing Podcast. Are you ready to unmask? Uh, I mean, unhelmet your favorite racers? Get ready for the most fun you'll have outside the racetrack to get you ready for the next race. You're listening to John Morrison and Megan Mitchell, and this is the True North Racing Podcast. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the True North Racing Podcast presented by Driving with Haley. I'm your host, John Morrison. Welcome back, everyone. We are episode, I think we're 137 now. I'm going to go take a look real quick over here on, I feel like we're, I think we're at 137, 138. I, it's been a day. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, We got some big news for you guys. Uh, We actually have um a brand new uh sponsor to the true north racing podcast the joe media uh it is actually a very good friend of ours mr oh sorry mr j Pepin has joined us with peps pro painting to yeah we're at 137 uh peps pro painting has joined joe media as the newest sponsor for the podcast he is going to be host the he is going to be bring us the opening segment each week where Megan and I recap our race weekends at the track um and all that you know and just kind of the the tomfoolery that goes on at the beginning of the show. tomfoolery what uh this week on the show we are excited to bring in Ray Morneau who as you guys know is for the most part you know he is a late model champion down at Delaware Speedway, and this season, this season, he has gone his feet wet in the APC United Late Model Series, teaming up with Casey Cash Racing, and uh, he is driving the number thirty Leona Ford Mustang in the series. It, this is so cool um, for Ray. I have I, I, for the past few years we've had him on the show preview. This is the second time on the show. And we are excited to have him join us. Um, he has, uh, we have seen him do so well over the last little bit here. And we, like I said, we are excited to have him join us again to talk racing. Um, to talk, yeah, to talk racing, to talk everything uh, of what's going on. Um, you know, Ray, like Ray has done a fantastic job. Uh, in the late models uh, at Delaware Speedway, he is a competitor each each night out. Um, so yeah, we're we're excited to uh, have Ray on talk about talk more about that. And uh, yeah, so uh, man, I <laughs> I'm sorry guys, this this feels so weird because this weekend I didn't go to the racetrack at all. Um, I I had my boys this weekend. They uh you know, when I have my kids it is it is it is a weekend for me to shut down for a little while and uh for for the weekend for the most part and be a family man as I love to be and you know, it's great cuz on Friday night like Friday night I picked the kids up we got back to my house and we took ended up taking the dog after dinner. We took the dogs for a walk. We didn't get home. It was Friday. Who cares? We uh we went for a walk and next thing I know it was like nine o'clock at night and we're just like holy crap where did the where did the time go? Which is perfect because that's what we want. We don't want not necessarily we don't want the time to go, but um you know, when we have a good, good enough walk with the, with the people we love, that's, that's the great part. So yeah, we went for a walk on Saturday night, sat or Friday night, Saturday, we had, uh, uh, we had Sunny's for dinner up in, uh, over here in Brampton. Um, we also had, uh, we had a fire to cook some s'mores and hot dogs on. Um, we had a blast as always, you know, it's so much fun when, um, 
when we get to be able to just park our butts down. We're going camping at the end of the month, so we're we're all looking forward forward to stuff like that because. And actually, they're coming with us to Sawbell Speedway. My kids are coming with me to Sawbell Speedway. So this will be the one of the first times um, they actually get to see me work for Joe and Media. So I'm, I'm excited for this. Um, we are going to get to our Driving with Haley vehicle spotlight here in just a second. Um, I've already took a sneak peek. And I, I always say this every week, but God, is it beautiful. Um, it is, uh, yeah, we'll get to that in just a second. There was lots of, I've luckily I've caught up a little bit today, um, of rate about racing that's gone on in Ontario. And for the most part, it seems like we had a great weekend, uh, all around the province. Of course there's hiccups, but what, what is, what isn't racing without some hiccups? And that's, one of the cool things we did see is, you know, even the hiccups, uh, we saw Ollie Ferguson um, have a little bit of an incident at, uh, he had a little bit of an incident up at F Full Throttle Motor Speedway on Saturday. Uh, but from the help of fellow competitors, he was able to get back out there. He, man, he keeps surprised, not, not necessarily he keeps surprising me, surprising me, but he definitely keeps showing, um, you know, why he's going to be a top driver here in Ontario. Um, last night or Saturday night, he was up at uh, full throttle motor speedway for the Ontario sportsman series race. And he, man, he, he did his thing. He went out there after practice, a little fumble in practice. He went out there and laid down the third fastest time in, qual in qualifying later on that night. And even I saw in a post that he raced 42 laps in second place, to last year's champion, Corey McAllister, um, before the car just slid away from him at the end of the race. And uh, unfortunately, fell back to third, but still a, a career bear stay for him, finishing top, you know, finishing on the podium. Uh, and I think this kid's going to be a force to reckon with here this year um, and going into next year for sure. He's going to, he's going to keep getting better and we're going to see him keep getting better. And that's when the struggle, that's when the problems are going to start for everyone else. Um, once this kid really figures out what's going, what, how do you, uh, how to wield these things, but he's always doing, showing a great job. So we're excited for that. Uh, Cody wilds on Friday night at Delaware had an inc inc interesting incident. Wow. I was trying to say that five times fast. Um, he had an interesting incident out there and people have talked and everything's cooled down, but, uh, he, he avoided a, a being involved in a huge wreck. Unfortunately, two other cars were, but uh, um, it, it's unfortunate when things like that happen. But that's it, sometimes it's racing, sometimes it's not, and emotions emotions flare up, and we never want to see that. So, um, glad to see every, everything prevail down there. Uh, Carson Nagy got another win up down there this weekend. Um, he's dominating the super stocks. Don't be surprised if he's yeah he's already a competitor, a, a contender for the championship down there. Same thing with Lane Zardo, Trevor Colliver. Those it's going to be a great battle all the way down there. Uh, I just saw that uh, Ryan Cowan with Cow Pro Motorsports uh, had a motor let go with them Saturday night at Flamborough Speedway. And you never want to see someone lose a motor, um, especially when it looked like a ball of flames. But luckily, none of it went to the cockpit from what I saw there, which is great. That's again, you never want to see that kind of stuff. So. Uh, so it's definitely we saw some highs and lows, and the crazy part is, is that now we are gonna have another track open up in just a couple of weeks. We got Sobble Speedway opening up, and again, I'm going at the end of the month. Um, I'm going for one of the two day of one of the uh, days. They are doing a dual race at the end of the, or do. <laughs> they're doing a Canada Day weekend up there uh, Saturday. I know. I think that day is. Uh, uh, Brandon Feeney is going to be there. I know I'm going to be going Sunday. So, um, it's going it, to, it's looking like it might be a fun weekend. Um, I mean, like I said, I'm excited. So, um, we're going to get into this week's, 
I'm sorry, guys. This, this weekend has just been crazy for me for the most part. Um, I'm glad to be doing the show tonight, and I'm excited to be bringing on uh, Ray Morneau in just a couple seconds here. But we are going to get into this week's Driving with Haley Vehicle Spotlight. And this week, we got a 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe LS model. It's got 85,325 kilometers. Oh, I know I say this each week, and I'm sorry, but it it's for it's beautiful. They they do great works. Haley's got great connections to great cars. Um, this week's like I said, it's a 2022 uh, Tahoe with 83, 85,000. Uh, it's a four it's a four wheel drive, white exterior seats eight. You know you always need that extra seat. Um, it has a 5.3 liter V8 cylinder. It's four doors. Uh, let's see. We've got tow hitch, third row seating, power driver's seat, keyless ignition, park assist, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, lane departure warning, power passenger seat. Um, as you guys are seeing by the photos here, it's a great unit for a family. You know, we've helped people get into the new cars with Haley, and you could be the next one. Um, if you don't like the vehicles that we're showing you on our vehicle spotlights, don't be afraid. Reach out to Haley. She can help you get into the ride of your choosing. She helped me get into my Dodge Caravan that I've rocked now for about a year and a half. The process was super simple. I literally reached out to her, came up with a couple options. I said, I I'm looking for a caravan. I got a family. We're going to expand in the next few years. We need something that's going to support that. She helped us out. We got ourselves into a caravan. And it's helped the family out. We're going to be using it for a camping trip uh, at the end, like at the end of June. We're going camping with it. So uh, who knows? Maybe we'll vlog that as well. Um, I don't know yet. We'll see. But uh, yeah, if you guys are looking for a new car, contact Haley Hill today at Driving with Haley on Facebook. Uh, you guys can also reach her by email at H Hill at RightRide.ca. Um, you guys can also give her a call at 289-808-2828. That is, uh, once again, you guys can find her on Facebook, Driving with Haley. Email her at hill at rightride.ca or as well as 289-808-2828. And of course, I, I, I really hope that's not a coincidence or that is a coincidence that she got 2828 as uh, her brother Cameron drives the 28 car. Uh not only at Oshawa Speedway on Friday nights in the dirt in the crate sprints in the 602 uh, Strickland's crates, but also in the um, pure stocks at Flamborough Speedway on Saturday night. So, like I said, if you're looking for a new ride, get a hold of Haley. She is going to get you set up with the ride that you need. Um, so, without further ado, we are going to get into this week's graphing design studio guest segment with ray morno joining us this week on the true north racing podcast we got the driver the number 30 ray Morn, uh, number 30 and zero three uh we got we are being joined by ray morno ray how's it going bud good good thank you uh for having me on i'm looking forward to the next hour no problem and we're we're, we're excited to have you um we have talked to you before which is awesome we talked a lot about how you got involved in racing but this year we've you you're going in a different route, which is so cool. I I've been wanting to see this happen since we talked, and you know now it's happening. It's it's so cool. Um, you are you technically a rookie this year in the in the late model series? Uh no. So we ran uh in 2020, uh, the yeah. COVID year, the APC had. So we ran the full season there. So no, I'm not a rookie. Ah, uh, damn it. Although That's I, unfortunate. I feel like I'm a little bit of a rookie going there. I was, I was <laughs> going to say, you're hitting up some tracks you've never hit before. Uh, as far as I know, you can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, I've I've run every track. Um, okay. But one, Peterborough, I just ran a super stock in and stuff like that. So it'll be a learning curve getting there with a late model. Absolutely, it will be. Uh, so that's pretty, it's pretty cool. So how did the, how did this whole deal come about? for you to get behind the wheel of a APC pro late, uh, pro late model. Um, so it all stemmed, uh, I mean, through the middle portion of last year, um, 
my sponsor, the John Arts Group, um, Jonathan Arts, he's heavily involved with us. He's uh, he's super pumped up to go racing. And um, toward the middle portion of the year last year, he was trying to get us something going to to get into APC. And, and it all kind of came together this winter. And um, I can't thank Jonathan Arts enough. He's uh, He's done so much for us and our, our race team. And um, this is another another example of it uh he he put the deal together with the una and um i can't thank them enough for coming on board it's it means a lot to carry uh the una on the car and um looking forward to it our, our opening night uh wasn't too bad at sunset we we lost handle on the car we qualified fourth but then we just lost handle on the car and ended up 10th but um came out of there with with a clean car 10th place finish decent start to the year and um we'll, we'll go on to flamborough this weekend I was just about to say this weekend, you get to go on to Flamborough Speedway, which is ex- awesome because I get to be there for this race. Um, and the last time I saw an APC race was 2021 at Flamborough when uh, the CVMs were a part of the deal for that. So I'm excited to go back, watch another APC race. What has it, What has been the biggest learning curve for you to go from running weekly at Delaware to now having to prepare two cars and go race two different divisions? Um, the biggest challenge has probably been uh, the sleep schedule. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been very hectic around here. Um, but no, honestly, the just getting two cars together is a lot. I didn't – me and my dad talked about it through the wintertime last <laughs> year and when we thought this deal might come together, and, and we were both all hands on deck for it. I mean, we – this is something we've always wanted to do. Um, never had the opportunity in front of us to do it and we couldn't pass it up obviously. So, um, but with that being said, like I said, two cars is very tough. Um, and then just going from, I mean, we had one car and it was the same track every week, right? Now you you have one car that's the same track every week. Not, not too bad. Kind of the regular thing, but yeah, it's the other car for the APC car when, you're going to a different track every weekend. It, it's a lot more work. So um, I'm just fortunate with the, uh, my dad here. He's uh, he does, uh, does everything for me. He, he's, he's really good. It's, it's me and him in the shop every night. And, um, and then we have our crew that comes, comes around every night too. So very fortunate to have uh, a lot of guys behind me and um, looking forward to the rest of the year. It's, it's going to be a lot of work and, and we know that, but uh, we're up for the challenge and uh, I'm hoping Hoping we can squeak out a few top fives and hopefully a win by the end of the year. I I will always say I've ever since I first chatted with you, I think it was 2020 area. I think it was 2020 when I first chatted with you. I was a huge fan of you then because a guy running in the States, I, I know you're out by Windsor area. So like, I get it. Yeah. It's easier for you to go over there, but to see you come back over run Delaware, and then I saw you run, uh, I think you, yeah, you ran in at uh, Flamborough in 2020 and seeing you, how you grew racing in Ontario, especially has been a phenomenal watch to see a guy like yourself can go out there, continues to get better. Cause you won the, the championship in 2021 at 20, Delaware, 2022. We won. Was it 2022? Yeah. 2021. Holy crap. Second. <laughs> Jesus. I've. I didn't thought it was 2021 for some reason, <laughs> man. So 2022, you were the late model champion there at Delaware Speedway. Now I feel like we got to go back two years to really catch up. Because <laughs> uh, in that time span, you not only won the championship at Delaware Speedway, but you also made a NASCAR Pinty Series, well NASCAR Canada Series start now, um, driving for 22 Racing. I do want to talk about that a little bit as well because, like, well, same deal. I saw you progress and now to see you go behind the wheel of a NASCAR Canada series car. I was so pumped for you. Cause I'm like, man, this guy's getting a shot. This, he deserves this. And you went out there. You did. I've watched the video. You've done very, you did very well, but I think it was a mechanical issue that took you out. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, blew a power steering line. I think it was like lap seven or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was kind of an early end to our day. Well, we didn't, it didn't end our day, but, it definitely put us behind. I think by the time we got it changed, we were 10 laps down. So kind of put us behind, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was definitely a really cool experience. That's for sure. It, uh, I, I didn't think again, that was, that was through Jonathan arts. He, he was, uh, 
he was really pushing to to get that deal going and and got that that for us and it was a it was a super cool deal to to come off the championship year um and then have that kind of lined up for the end of the year was really really cool and i mean it, you get in a race in the NASCAR Canada series too right it's it's definitely a very cool experience the the top uh top series in in Canada so um it was it was really cool we we ran pretty well. I, I mean, we, I think we qualified seventh, um, sixth or seventh. And then, uh, we, we started the race and we were up to fifth or sixth, I believe. And then that's when that power steering line blew. And at that point you're 10 laps down and you try and make them up, but it just wasn't enough cautions and, uh, yeah. couldn't get our laps back. Yeah. I guess that's the biggest problem with running a series like that. And even a, even just a one-off race like that, there's so much that could go wrong. You want to have a good showing, good day. Like you said, a simple thing almost took you guys, essentially took you guys out, and you were fighting for, or for I guess for the for a little bit there before you changed it. Um, it. It's it was still cool to see you get out there, run with those guys, show them like, hey, I can do this. And I really hope more doors like this will open up for you because. I've said it countless times to numerous people that you are one of the top, I, I, one of the top guys, I think in Ontario for late model racing. And I would love to see you get a shot down South as well. Yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate your kind words. It's uh, it means a lot to not only me, but our team. That's um, we, it's, it's not just, just me behind the wheel making this happen. It's, yeah. it's everybody back here uh, at our shop. It's, it, it means a lot to, uh, to hear that. And, um, like I said, it's, it's not, not just me doing it. It's all of our team, my dad, yeah. my uncles, um, all the sponsors, everybody that supports us. It, uh, means a lot to hear that. It would definitely be really cool to get down South somewhere, um, in the late model. Um, the, the Pinty's deal was pretty cool. Um, just, uh, I, I really, really enjoy the late models and seeing them big shows and the big names. It's, it would be really cool to get down South to say a Nashville or, or the uh, snowball or the snowflake 100. So we'll see, see what, uh, what comes up, but uh, looking, looking forward to obviously the rest of this year. And then any, any opportunities that come up, we'll, we'll see what we can make happen. Yeah. You guys are definitely, I, I don't want to say one of the smaller teams I've seen on, on the track. Um, but I do see that the fact that it's a lot of you and your dad in the shop and your sister and your family just generally helping out, which is, First of all, the support you have from your family is you don't see that very much across the board where your whole family is out in the shop helping out on any given night. Like I see those team pictures um, up on your racing page about, you know, your your sister's off doing something with the car. You're underneath the rear end. Your dad's doing something else. It's and even when the when the rest of the crew comes in, it's still it still very much seems like a family atmosphere there, which is which is great and you got i know you got some great people behind you to help you out so which is which what you need to, yeah to succeed yeah. sometimes yeah exactly i'm very fortunate with uh with the family support like you said uh my parents and my sister it's they're they're 100 percent into it if if they weren't um i, I don't know I, I wouldn't be doing what i'm doing that's for sure so that that aspect of it yeah i'm super lucky we are i feel like we are a bit of a smaller team but we have gotten gotten some more funding and, and we've been able to do a little bit more, which has been been really, really good and really fortunate for it. Right. So um, just just going to try and do what we can do this year with uh, with what we got. And it's uh, it's tough going up against the APC guys. I mean, they're the best of the best. Right. So yep. uh, we're still we're still coming out of our two car garage. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely tough. We're, we're working hard at it, but uh, we're going to. We're going to see how we do against uh, the guys in APC. Absolutely. And like we've, we've kind of go back and, you know, this weekend you're going to go back to Flamborough Speedway for, I guess, the first time in a couple of years, I guess. Or did you run there last year as well? At any uh, point? No, we didn't. We didn't run there okay, last year. So. We ran. We tested last weekend. Oh, okay. Um, which was kind of nice. Oh, to yeah. Get some you laps. were there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was there too. I'm like, it was like, yeah, it was great to see Ray out there. I'm like, <laughs> Dude, this weekend just was weird for me. So sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, no. We, we it was nice to be able to get some laps there. It's been a while since we've been there. So and plus this this new to us car, it, it was nice to get there and get some seat time and uh, get ready for this weekend. 
now going into what like obviously sleep schedule and stuff like that what's the biggest difference for you to really prepare to get your car red like not even the car but even just your team in general to make sure they can um make sure you're able to get to each event like what is what does it take for you guys to get to each race what do you guys have to do typically um so obviously the regular maintenance um it changes obviously a little bit with the 100 lap races in comparison to our delaware car yeah but um yeah we i went through the car today and and it seems like everything looked good so we're uh we scaled it and it's all ready to go just um i'm gonna be out there the next well tomorrow i'm going to test at delaware with my uncle's car but uh but we're going to uh be out there the next couple nights just just going over it again having another good once over but uh yeah with with heaven so we got to race friday night uh at delaware and then we race uh flamborough saturday so it's gonna be pretty tough because we we got to get two cars down the down the highway and and people and stuff so we do have two trucks and trailers which makes it a little bit easier we'll uh we'll bring both down and then we'll switch uh trailers and then head up farther up and uh we got a, a lot of support with my sponsors as well um not only on the sponsorship side but they come and help us as well so i'm super fortunate there with uh with the crew that we got and the support that that we're going to have enough guys to to be able to do this and um kind of i don't want to wear where are my guys out this early right i mean we got <laughs> i think we have six weekends that are friday saturday we race oh. so um yeah this will be the first one um for for delaware and apc so we'll see see how this weekend goes and then make adjustments off of that i guess so. <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say your poor team is gonna kill you at the end of this year <laughs> they're gonna be like yeah. why would you do this to us <laughs> yeah yeah no i that's what me and my dad talked about in the winter time and we were all gone home and then um came around probably march or april and we're like you know we probably should have asked the guys if they wanted to do that <laughs> but here we are <laughs> here you are you got two cars two different two different series um let, let's get into some, even your weekly racer right now. How has that been? I think you've what, run only two two nights there, three nights. Yeah, we ran two nights. I guess I guess the answer I guess the answer would be a 50-50 toss up here. How's the season been going for you so far? Um, overall, I think it's been pretty good. We we have speed in the car, which is really nice. Um, last year we built that car brand new, and and we just we struggled. There was there was a lot of new car blues and. Just we could never really get a handle on it um, until the end of the year. We, the last two or three races, we we started getting a little bit better of a handle on it, and then through the winter time, me and my dad were talking, and um, with the help from McCall's, we uh, we made some pretty big chassis changes, and um, they've they've reacted really well. The the car is probably the best it's been, and um, yeah, I mean it, it's been pretty good. We the first night we. We ended up, we were running side by side with Steckley and uh, there was contact and I, I feel like it was a racing deal. And um, we ended up spun and we ended up seventh that night, but head speed, we were racing for the lead with uh, coming to one to go, I think. So, um, and then last weekend we, we ended up winning. It was, I was on the other end of, of a racing deal. Um, the two leaders had got together into three, uh, coming to the checker and we, we were able to squeak by on the bottom. So. It was, uh, it was nice to get a win this early in the season, and we're looking forward to the – we have a 75 lap for this weekend. So we have a lot of momentum going into that. We we know we got a really good car, and we're looking forward to uh, this weekend's race. Sorry, sorry. You just said you got a 75 lapper on Friday night? <laughs> and you have a 100 lapper on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope you have the biggest water bottle ever that's filled with Gatorade just to drink. <laughs> to get yourself replenished because that's going to be insane yeah yeah i'm praying that it's not going to be too hot but uh we'll see <laughs> i haven't checked the weather yet <laughs> that's the thing you never want to check the weather too early because you never know what you don't want to see that dreaded r word um yes, early yeah. in the week because you never know what is going to happen and just because i want to be that person okay you're going to be fine you should be fine <laughs> perfect there early early you're fine <laughs> <laughs> lots of fluid still but you'll should be fine um 
let's talk about that first race though, because as a lot of people who have been following Joe Media Promotions for the for the past little bit here saw that we did strap my la- my first ever GoPro ever purchased um, onto the rear bumper of Ray's car for the feature that night. Um, it held its own right up until that incident uh, Ray was talking about with two to go. And that is where the footage cuts off is just as they took the green flag leading into that incident. I feel like, uh, first of all, I got to thank you for trusting me for, for letting me throw a GoPro on there. Um, because I know a lot of people don't like it when there's a GoPro in certain places. And I appreciate you for letting me throw some, uh, th- throwing that thing back there. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's no problem there. I, I enjoy being able to watch them. I, I love watching your videos and, and getting to see GoPro footage. I have a GoPro, but, um, you get so busy throughout the night. I always forget it. <laughs> <laughs> that is why people hire me to bring out my camera so that we can do this. <laughs> That's the way we do this. Um, but yeah, is like I, I've showed it on this on the show before. It definitely it made it out. It's still it's still operable, but oh, uh, yeah. so, <laughs> so I hey, didn't completely kill it. <laughs> you didn't completely kill it. No, it still it was it when I got it handed back to me. It was still on. Oh really? It was still on. The only problem was is I lost my roll bar mounts. Oh, <laughs> it's sit- somewhere at Flair at Delaware Speedway. Whoever grabbed it, you're welcome. <laughs> If it even works, I don't even know if it does. Um, <laughs> there, there, it's, it's, it was awesome to be able to see that footage because I've done it once before, um, but I didn't get the footage that I've always wanted to see. And with you, I actually got the footage I really wanted to see because you ran, you were on the high side of Steckley for a while. Then you got to the inside. Um, you had Jaden Chapman back there. You had Shay Gamble behind you. It was so cool to be able to see how these, how you did these, the different drivers drive into a corner or to, I always say you can watch racing go round and round. You, everyone, you can, you can enjoy it. Okay. For me, I like the intricacy of seeing where guys are breaking compared to you. And because not, you can't always tell from like a roof cam, but you certainly can tell from a bumper cam. Yes, yeah, for sure. No, that that was something really cool to see. Like you said, when I watched the video, it was and Delaware is a place that, especially in the three, there's a lot of options you have, like on entry and how you get through the corner. So it was really cool to see the different lines people are running, the breaking points, like you said. So that that stuff's really cool to see, and I'm glad I could help out that way. <laughs> The problem with me that night is I messed up. I was supposed to have like four or five different v- views. And because I forgot it was my it definitely you could tell my off season had was rusty because I forgot to put this SD card in oh. <laughs> before the other guys went out. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm getting a heat. I got a heat race with Jaden Chapman with the in car and then I got you uh, in the feature. So, hey, it worked out. Got some great footage. Um but no, like honestly, it, it's great. Like I've always, I always find it interesting when people put the GoPro on the roof, because to me, it's like you don't, you can't tell. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you put it underneath a car, inside a car, you really can see what you're doing, and, and it gives always a different perspective, which is awesome. Um, because that's what we. No, to be fair, us us fans, we want to see different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and I, I always, when I had my GoPro in my car, I ran it a lot at uh, flat rock in Michigan in our street stock. Yep. Um, and it was that I always ran it right behind my shoulder so that I could see, like you could see out the window, see what was going on ahead of you. And then you could see me working the wheel too, kind of thing. And, and it, it helped a lot. Uh, the crew really enjoyed watching it too. <laughs> it's, it's always fun when, when your friends and family get to watch it and be like, Oh, so that's what you're doing in there. Like, it, <laughs> you, yeah, you, it's not just going in circles. <laughs> you, not even that, but like, uh, what is it? You could be, you could be telling your crew you're so loose or you're so tight, <laughs> and you see you either like jerking on the wheel, like, trying to catch the rear end, or you see that you're trying to keep it left, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, you look fine up here. What are you talking about? Get in here. I am tight. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. It was nice. Um, one of our, our sponsors back in the day, he's our, our neighbor. Um, he, uh, he loved watching it. Um, and our neighbor, Eddie, he, he really enjoyed watching it because like you said, from outside the car, you don't, you can't really notice it as well, but, um, he always loved watching it. It was, it was really cool. So I might have to fire it back up, maybe throw it back in the late model. Come on, man. There's the RMR YouTube channel right there. Just <laughs> in-car videos each week. Um, before we continue on, because this might be one again, always it's always the lengthiest segment with you, but which, which is awesome. We're gonna get into our tailored to you media and design fan question period. Whereas you saw earlier today on on Facebook and Instagram, we that we had uh, announced that you were coming on the show tonight, and we got some questions for you. You ready to answer them? Yes, for sure. All right, first one up comes to us from Nicole Givens. What's your favorite Dana's desserts? Um. <laughs> uh probably the peanut butter uh the ones with the rice krispies i don't know what they're called i just always ask her to make them, and I always <laughs> them. <laughs> uh all right and the second one comes to us from garrett tamirzma he goes what do you think is your weakest track on the apc schedule or the one you have the least experience with uh so the one i have the least experience with would be peterborough i just have one super stock race and that's probably the one i'm most worried about uh sunset I was worried about two and, and we struggled a bit, but uh, yeah, those, those two are the ones that I'm worried about, but uh, we'll see. We, we got a couple of weeks for Peterborough. So I'll watch a lot of, a lot of video and, and see if we can uh, figure out what we're doing there. Next one comes to us from Chris Lawrence. He goes, what's your favorite car that you have driven? And do you have a bucket list car to race? Um, yeah. My favorite car is probably it's a toss-up between the legend car and this pro late model we have uh the pro late models are just so much fun um and then uh my fit my the car i want to drive is an outlaw late model they are by far my favorite car um they're they're just they're sweet looking and they sound phenomenal <laughs> i can attest to that. those things those, car, those cars are badass um <laughs> uh, this one comes to us from Wally Wilson. He goes, will this year's annual Morno Speedway 500 be live stream again? And should I come out of retirement from the first year? <laughs> I'm not sure if uh, people want to watch it. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> And it's usually pretty late too, but uh, I mean, we can make it happen and Wally should probably get back <laughs> into the race. It's uh, last time he got sent off turn two. So we'll see if he can redeem himself. Uh, well, we'll talk about that after here. Next one comes to us from uh Colton Everingham. He goes, Who's your favorite super stock driver, and why isn't it me? <laughs> um, I, I don't like to pick favorites, but um, I do have a lot of buddies that race it, so uh, obviously the Naggies and, and Colton, and uh, I, I don't like I said, I don't like to pick favorites, but those are those are two or two or three guys that I always pull for uh dana comes back to us with what's your favorite racetrack and what's your least favorite racetrack and what's your dream track to race at um dream track would probably be bristol bristol seems really cool favorite track um probably i really enjoyed flat rock in the states it was a lot of fun um and what was the other question she asked me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's your favorite, your least, and your dream? So you covered your dream track. Oh, yeah, least favorite. Um, probably Peterborough because we had a really bad experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to lead into another question after this. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Ty Claxton asked, what is your great, greatest accomplishment in racing and what is your most oh, – right, we'll go – Well, this, these are two longer ones. What's your greatest accomplishment in racing? uh winning the uh pro late model championship in 22 that that would be a pretty great accomplishment <laughs> um and what is your most forgettable moment in racing that haunts you to this day uh it would have been delaware in 2017 or 16 okay uh, i was running my uncle's car uh late model that it's when the series had just gotten back to delaware and um uh, we were running fourth, I think. We we're looking for third, and the leader blew up. I think it was Joe Lawrence that blew up, 
at the start finish line and laid oil down and I got I got stuck in the oil got up into one just I nosed it into the wall it wasn't too bad and then the guy behind me I think it was Wayne Pilkey uh he uh got sideways in the oil and then just clobbered the car I mean it was I felt so bad because we we pretty much stripped the fuel cell the seat the motor and then junked most of the rest (laughs) oh wow yeah it was uh it was pretty bad is there a video of that by chance up on youtube do you think i don't think there was i I, yeah because i was looking for it my dad was spotting he said with the headphones on that's the loudest hit he's heard um it was it was a it was a huge hit but um yeah that that one i still remember it (laughs) Uh, Lori Bradley asks, do you have any pre-race rituals? Not really. Uh, I don't, I mean, I do some of the stuff the same, but not, not really anything too crazy. <laughs> uh, this one comes from Corey, Corey Dwayne. What's been your favorite race so far? Uh, that would be probably the 100 lap race at flat rock um so Corey used to race at flat rock he was a super late model driver um so when i ran street stocks uh we had a 100 lap street stock race and we ended up winning it uh, i think it was our second year there uh, it was my okay. first win and it was uh, it was a pretty pretty cool cool deal there was a, a lot of side by side racing and uh, we came out on top of that so that was that was always a, a really cool one to win and then our final one comes to us from William underscore Trillium on Instagram. He goes, what's your favorite racing memory so far? Uh, I, guess, probably, I guess we kind of covered that with earlier as well. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if there's another one, pick, feel free to pick another one. Uh, no, I'd say the, the Pro Late Mall Championship and the first win at Flat Rock in the, in the street stock. All right. Well, that is that wraps up our Taylor to you meeting design fan question period. Of course, we've got to thank everyone who submitted questions this week. And as always tune in next Sunday to find out who will be our guest and how to drop uh, questions for said guest. I'm not going to announce the guest right now, but um, stay tuned guys to the drone media and promotion socials um, going for next weekend. Uh, so I do want to touch back here on the <laughs> Morno speedway 500. Um, <laughs> I know I've seen the video of it because I think I think it was Wally just got just absolutely just tossed. <laughs> yeah. Um, how did wh- explain to us if I'm gonna find the video? If you could send it to me, that'd be great, and I'm gonna put it in the show. <laughs> As like you're explaining right now, I'm gonna put it in. Please tell us wh- how this came about, what this is, wh- what the whole deal was. So it was. It all started in 2020 when the whole COVID thing was going on, there was no racing going on. So we were sitting out back in our, our yard and I don't know, we, we used to race remote, uh, remote control cars in, uh, in our garage for years. And we had them um, and we were starting to play around with them because we were bored out of our mind. We didn't have anything to do. So we ended up pouring a concrete track in our backyard um i forget the degree on the banking but we uh we poured it put walls up put little signs on the back stretch with my sponsors on it and um uh, yeah and then uh i think it was probably like a week or two after we poured it they said that uh apc was going to do five races so the remote control car track got put on the back burner and we were going racing so <laughs> <laughs> we haven't used it a whole lot for other than our uh racing on our feet (laughs) um and it's usually our sponsor party at the end of the year we we always throw a big uh a big bash for everybody that helps us out and it's usually two o'clock or something in the morning and that's when we uh we decide to go out and and race and uh usually gets pretty physical like you said wally got sent over the wall pretty pretty bad the first year so he needs to redeem himself yeah that was uh uh that was definitely the video. Just, uh, you know, those things that sometimes it just lives in your head, rent free. <laughs> I'm going to be yeah. honest. Just seeing Wally I just fly <laughs> is one of them. <laughs> it, it's, oh uh, yeah. The, well, you need to come out. This needs to happen again. I don't care. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a good show. Um, 
you said your your fa- your least favorite track was Peterborough Speedway. Uh, what happened there to make it one of your least besides um, probably just track time, I guess. Uh, yeah. So we we went down there and um, we weren't taking the care of the car at that point. So setup wise, we didn't really know what we were going down there with. And uh, when we got there, um, just the the car wasn't quite right when we got there. And there was a torrential downpour all day. Didn't think we were going to race. And then it cleared up. They got the track dried. And we got eight laps for a practice slash qualifying. And then we raced. So I went out and the oh, car boy. was, yeah, the car was bottoming out. And we uh, we took a huge swing at it. And then uh, just it still wasn't enough. So it was it was just a, a long, long night. But uh, looking forward to getting there with the with the late model now. Yeah, it's a uh, it's one of my favorite facilities to go to. I love the way the track is laid out. Um, the way the way the drivers have to drive that track as well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I've I've put a GoPro inside a friend of mine's uh, super stock and mini stock over the last couple of seasons, and he's the way that track drives is, is so weird. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I shouldn't say like, I, I really enjoyed it. Like it was, it was a fun place to drive. Just yeah. the, the experience wasn't so great, but uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's very different. It's, it's a really, it's a small track, but it's really fast. Like <laughs> oh, yeah. you're moving. Oh yeah. There's not a, and a hundred laps there will go by quick. Yeah. Yeah. Though if we get a long green flag run, it'll click off very, very fast. Oh yeah. Um, Obviously, what is your goals this season in terms of your Delaware car and the APC car for your team? Uh, so Delaware, uh, with the experience that we have there, we we go there expecting to win. So that's kind of that's where we're at with that. We're we're looking for race wins and uh, chasing a championship too. So I think we're we're second in points right now, one back from Gary Adrianson. So. Uh, we're, we're right there. We already got a win this year, so we're looking for more. And then as for the APC car, we're we're hoping top 10 to top five in points. Um, and then just see how, how the year goes, obviously. But uh, top fives would be nice. Top tens are, are good. And um, anything more than that is is really good. So we know we're, we're kind of up against a lot. We're, it's our first time at a lot of these tracks with – uh, with the late models so it's going to be tough but we're looking forward to it we're going to make the most of every experience there so we're hoping um we're going to go to the tracks the first time and then the second time hopefully get better from there and and uh just keep on improving now of the f- five apc tracks that you head off to this was it five uh yeah delaware sunset flamborough sawell peterborough yep which one of those which one of those tracks excluding Delaware because I know how good you are there <laughs> do you so out of the four remaining tracks what shot do you like what are your expectations for each race going in like you ju- you just said it you're looking to improve from the first trip to the second trip going in which sorry which place are you most excited about visiting bes- um to tr- to run the to run the uh, ABC series with uh, I'm really looking forward to Sobel. Sobel was, we ran there once in the late model in 2020. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. So that's, that's a place that I'm really looking forward to going. Uh, again, my expectation to go there is hopefully a top, a top 10 is good. Uh, and then the top five is even better. Right. So um, that's what we're kind of looking at. And we'll see, like I said, for the second time around for the second race, we're just hoping to improve from the first one. So, We'll see how that goes. I, I'm excited to see how well you do. I love, I love Sawell Speedway. I, I've it's such a cool, unique track, um, because it's it's so tight but so flat. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. I I love the track. The only thing I don't like is the location because it's four <laughs> and a half hours from us. <laughs> Hopefully, you don't have to race on the Friday night because that. I'm pretty sure I think we oh, have to race no. both both of them Sobel races. I'm pretty sure we we run Friday night. 
hopefully you have another driver to help drive to drive the truck up for you so you can get some sleep in. Uh, yeah, my dad does all the driving, which um, he's going to be pretty wore out. Uh, so we'll have to have to keep chatting at him to make sure he stays up. But uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate that I can I can sleep in the back. So, yeah, because move in time for the APC series is like 8 a.m., right? Uh, they pushed them back this year. They've worked oh, on the they? schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, good. I think good. At sunset, it was 1230 or one o'clock. Okay. which is, is a lot better. Yeah, it, it, they've they've worked on the schedule and it, it, a lot more uh, crew friendly. You're not yeah. you're not there at eight o'clock and starting at nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, that was always my biggest fear. Like when I saw that, I was like, man, I hope no one I know is, wants me to come help out because I, I don't know if I can make it. Like if you race a Friday night, like that's you're just asking either to stay up all night or someone needs to drive you up there kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. So the only nice thing about racing Friday night is it'll split the trip up for us. So yeah. we'll be able to get two hours down the road and then we'll stop, grab a hotel and then uh, get the next leg of the trip done the next morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a trip that uh, former APC competitor and champion Andrew Gressel knows all too well um, as he would race Friday nights at Delaware and then race Saturday nights up at Sobble. So that's, Dude, dude was putting in miles each weekend, so that's <laughs> he he was nuts. And I, I met him when I, we were running the late models down there, and I I always said like you must he must love this because yeah just... yeah it's it's out of pure love for the sport, right? <laughs> oh yeah, like it's it's what two and a half hours for me to get to Sobble from here. It's about two and a half two to two and a half hours or so, mm-hmm. and. I don't mind the drive because well, like I, I kind of wish it's one of those things where there was a highway. Yeah. Like where you can go hundred. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I go up uh highway 10 and then take 10 all the way till it meets six and it's all 80 and then 60, 50, 40 and then 60, <laughs> 80. It's like, yeah, yeah, it definitely, if there was a highway to go straight there, it'd be great. But it's all the back roads and stuff, right? Just adds time. <laughs> oh, does it ever? And by the time you get there, you just want to be there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is like that. I'm going. I'm going camping at the end of the month. Actually, in Sobble, we're going leaving Friday after work. Going up, we're staying at Sobble Falls Tent Trailer Park, and uh, Saturday we're doing a beach day. Sunday we're going racing. I'm excited for it. It's you need to make a weekend out of it. That's the thing. Yeah, for sure. It's 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 so far out. Yeah, you definitely need to you need to plan it and make a weekend so you can enjoy it. Oh yeah. It's uh it's 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 a nice like it's a nice trip up. It it always is. And it's nice because when you it's not necessarily when you know people, but like when you know especially people who sponsor racing. Mm-hmm. The Gre- the Gressel's part owns Sobble Speedway, so they own Sobble Tent Trailer Park you want to support the people who support racing. Not only do you go to the track and support them, that's how you do it as well. Right. And that's, that's what yeah. we all got to do with our sponsors. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you, uh, if you go and support someone else, you, you're, you're kind of defeating the purpose of the whole sponsorship and racing deal. Right. <laughs> yeah. You need to support those who support racing. D- Dude. I, to this day, to this day, I still put in Pennzoil oil in my vehicles because <laughs> the guy I crewed for with last sponsorship deal was with Pennzoil. <laughs> so I will, I will, <laughs> I will only put in Pennzoil or Quaker state because those are the lot. Cause same brand for the most part. Uh, because the driver I crewed for had that sponsorship. I was like, well, that's all I'm going with for till <laughs> till, till there's another awesome. reason, but that's, that's how we maybe not on a corporate level such as that, but, on lower levels, you want to be able to support the people that uh, support racing. Um, before we let you go, because I didn't realize how quick this hour almost flew by here. It was insane. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to forget this as I've forgotten on a couple other occasions and I don't want to forget. Uh, I'm going to give you the next few minutes. Please thank everyone, your sponsors, your family, your friends, um, a pet iguana you may have a pet rat you may have had when you were two years old, a dog you're hoping to have in three years, uh, your great, great grandparents who, who came over from across the pond or something. 
this is your chance. Thank everyone and anyone you want to thank. Okay, awesome. Um, so yeah, first I gotta I gotta start off by thanking my parents. Um, my mom and dad are a hundred percent behind me. Um, dad does so much work in the shop, and mom, mom lets us go and do that, and uh, and I really appreciate that. She feeds us at the track at home, and uh, it's it's really really appreciated. And my sister as well. She's she's behind it a hundred percent. If I didn't have my family behind me, I like I said earlier, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. So just got to start off with them. And then um, all my my aunts, uncles, cousins, uh, family, friends that, that come out and help us out uh, either at the shop or uh, out at the racetrack. Uh, it's it's much appreciated. And then uh, start off with my Delaware sponsors. Um, first and foremost, uh, JR, Dutch Brothers, Toremont Cat. East Elgin Concrete Farming, Expressway Trucks, Crown Comber, Iron Mike Industries, St. Dennis Machining, Rapid Drainage, Hallmark Memorial, Sun Parlor Trailers, Reed Farms, Dana's Desserts, Lakeshore Landscape, and Turner Landscaping. Um, and then on the APC side, we have Leuna, uh, Priestley Demolition, APC, East Elgin Concrete Farming, Render Construction, Jones Demolition, and Orange Rock Developments. Um, and then um, a special shout out to Jonathan Arts. He, uh, he's the man that, that put this APC deal together and he uh, backs us a lot with uh, our Delaware deal. So just got to give a special shout out to him and his family, um, Ryan Arts, uh, Laura Lee and Kevin. We, uh, we appreciate you guys and the families that, uh, that support us. And we, uh, we're looking forward to the rest of the year with them. Awesome, man. It's uh we're excited to see how well you do. Um so this weekend you got a 75 lapper at Delaware, 100 lapper at Flambro. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all I can think right now. It's just good luck. Just please stay hydrated. That's all I uh I know I know <laughs> you, you got you know your racers how you guys are. Um uh, Stay hydrated, get some rest. Uh, I'll be I'll be there cheering you guys on because I I don't care. Y'all are you you and your family have done inc incredible things uh, out of your shop, and I just hope to see you guys continue doing the best uh, you guys can. Um, good luck with the rest of your season. Uh, like I said, we're gonna be cheering you on from over here. Uh, we hope to see you raise another championship banner down there at Delaware Speedway. And uh, hopefully we'll see you get an APC win this year. That's that's I, I feel like you guys can do that. Yeah, I, I definitely hope so. I appreciate the kind words and I know uh, our team and family do as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, it would be really cool to uh, get another championship at Delaware, like you'd mentioned. And uh, and an APC win would uh, would be awesome. It would be a huge accomplishment for us. Uh, it's it's the uh, top series around here and. And if we could uh, end up on top, that would be really, really cool. Uh, where can people who are listening who aren't following you, where can they find you on social media to keep up to date with everything that, that you guys are doing with your team? Uh, so we have a Facebook page. It's Ray Morno Racing. And we have an Instagram Instagram page as well, uh, Ray Morno Racing. Um, I post on my Instagram as well. It's Ray Morno 03. Uh, those are those are the places you can follow us and uh, look for look for any upcoming news with any opportunities that come up and uh, race results and where we'll where we'll be that weekend. Awesome, man. Well, good luck the rest of the season and uh, we'll be cheering you on. Awesome. Thank you. You have yourself a good night. You too. Bye now. And we're back. After our conversation with Ray Mornor, we course we gotta thank Ray for joining us this week. Of course, we gotta thank our partners, Graphic Design Studios and uh Taylor to you Media and Design um for being the presenting sponsor of our guest segment and as well as our fan question period. Uh it was it's always fun talking with Ray. I've seen Ray. Uh, here and there at the racetracks, either dirt. I saw him at, at uh, Southern Ontario Motor Speedway in, in 2021. Uh, usually I just randomly see him <laughs> at racetracks, and it's always great uh, seeing him and even just getting a chance to talk some racing with him. He's such a good guy. 
Um, we hope to see the success of him and his team this year do very well in the APC series as well as Delaware Speedway. Uh, we are uh, we are very thankful to be able to have j- drivers like him come on because that's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about these guys, see how they're doing, what they're what they want to do. Um, it's a uh, it's always a great thing. Uh, I don't really have much else for you guys right now. We're kind of, uh, like I said, it was a weird weekend for me. Uh, next weekend, um, I will be at Flambro Speedway for the, not for the APC race, but I will be there for watching it. But, uh, we are going to be doing a race day vlog with Cam Thompson. Uh, it's one of two race day vlogs we are going to do with him this season, this season, um weather is looking very favorable early on so uh i'm excited to get back to flamber speed record a race day vlog and uh see if my luck can turn around on how i handle these these videos see if i can get a little bit better at them um i think i need to go back to what i was doing in 2021 with the cvms a little bit to really capture what uh what the races were going on so uh hopefully you guys uh, check it out stay tuned uh, we will be providing race day updates at the Speedway in terms of how Cam has is doing. Um, so stay tuned to see how well, how well they turn out. Um, make sure you guys follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, uh, at Joe Media on most platforms. Um, stay up to date. Also, you guys can find us at JoeMedia.ca. Check out our driver profiles, uh, write-ups, uh, race recaps, driver lineups, our vlog schedule for this season. Uh, the driving with Haley vehicle spotlight is up there each week. So if you don't catch it on the show, go over to the website, check it out there. Um, we have everything there uh, in regards to Joe media. as well as the podcast in its visual form, as well as links to the true North racing podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever you are listening to the true North racing podcast, make sure you subscribe, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with what's going on with Joe Media Promotions and the True North Racing Podcast each week. Um, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you all for listening. It is uh, it is awesome. I love you, reaching out to everyone and uh, having you guys tune in for a little bit. Um, if you would like to be an upcoming guest, please feel free to reach out. We'd be more than happy to have you on, uh, get, us, get you into our lineup. We got a great lineup coming up here soon. Um, once I get to my notes... Cause I, I never think about it. Ooh, I just got to double check with them, but it looks like next week we're going to have Jonathan. Howe join us. Yeah. The voice of Maryville speedway is going to join us back again on the true North racing podcast. Last time he was with Travis Cunningham and we talked, uh, everything about the Southern Ontario dirt show. And now this time we're going to have him on to talk everything going on with Maryville. This is one of the first times we're going to get really dirty here in Southern Ontario, uh, talking racing. So, uh, make sure you guys tune in for that one. As always, make sure you guys uh, check out our social medias on f- Sunday to see our graphing or our tailored to you media and design fan question period. So you guys can drop a question for next week's guest. Um, other than that, that is going to do it for me this week. Like, like I said, please, be, please follow the true North racing podcast on all major podcast platforms, as well as follow the Joe media promotions on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and as well, stay up to date over at joemedia.ca. I'm John Morrison. We'll see you guys next week. Bye now.